Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Always Aggressive Podcast, special uh, Big Ten Championships edition here on your Friday afternoon. Brackets just went final a little bit ago as far as the draws for this weekend's action, so we wanted to bring it to you as fast as we could. Coach Urslan, Tanner Lipset, uh, in, in the – in the thick of it, uh, out at uh, in Happy Valley right now, and and before we get tropical, to the rest, we, tropical state state college, Pennsylvania sounds real tropical. Yeah, yeah, but but not too cold to enjoy some ice cream. Glad to hear you guys got out and about today. Yeah, the uh, what is that? The Berkey uh, Creamery. Uh, we we paid a little visit. It's been years since I've been there, and and I had to do it. Um, I I don't feel too bad about myself. Normally I might, but we even we even got Elaine Wan Street, our dietitian there. So. You know, that she was I'm like, adamant. Feel better. Yes, she was adamant about going. She actually threatened that we would no longer be her favorite sport if we did not go with her. <laughs> so we, uh, you know, she means a lot to us. So that we we took that threat with you know some some yes. serious some serious nature to it. We all have to yep. sacrifice from time to time. You know? Absolutely. Yes. 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 And uh, I, uh, now that we've got gonna that done, pay, we can get on. With I'm going to pay for that. Right? I'm going to pay for that pint of ice cream I just inhaled, but it was, it was delicious. Got to know what flavors you guys went for. Oh, so I changed it up. They had a sugar cookie um, ice cream sandwich with strawberry ice cream. So I thought that flavor combination sounded pretty good. So I went sugar cookie, um, strawberry ice cream. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, I'm, I'm having trouble remembering the name of it. It was sticky something. Tony, do you remember the name of it? Might have been like Sticky Briar, Sticky Briar ice cream. I don't know. It was cinnamon ice cream with uh, chunks of like cinnamon roll, like dough, with like a streusel <laughs> swirl in it. It was, I'm in. yeah, it was, it was magnificent. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> All right, we got the important stuff out of the way. Um, there you go. Yeah, we're, <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to know about ice cream. No, they don't. They want to know about rest. They want to know college, about rest. You get ice cream. That's it. Coach, you guys had the uh, the coaches meetings earlier today. Um, had some discussions talking about seedings, and then you know afterwards the brackets come out. Uh, just all what we really want to do today is just kind of go through the field and 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 some of the draws and and just get an overall feeling for uh, for the weekend. That we'll start at uh, we'll start at twenty five. Devin Schroeder and uh, yeah. in the field. Yeah, no doubt. Um, the seeds held. Uh, by and large, there'll be a few changes that, that we'll discuss as we go through it. But by and large, most of the seeds held that uh, from the pre-seeds that people probably saw earlier this week. Uh, Devin, it was a very it, short meeting. It was a very yeah, short meeting. We flew short. through the brackets. No, no doubt. Not a lot of arguing. And sometimes you get great arguments. But this year, very, very calm and, and went through quickly. Um, Devin Schroeder held as the seventh seed. He gets the 10 out of the gate. Uh, Cardani from Illinois. Obviously, they're they're common. You know, they've seen each other a few times. Uh, Devin's Very tight. Always, yep, Devin's always come out the winner, but certainly we know. You know, it'll be another battle. You know, so uh, you know, but we know what we're going to get there, right? Like I said, they're familiar with each other, mm -hmm. and so that's the seven ten match uh, right out of the gate. Um, winner there, you know, and obviously we keep Devin you know, on the moment, but the winner is going to feed into the two, which is Cronin, uh, mm -hmm. who has a buy. The top two uh, seeds, if you look in the brackets now, people will understand that one and twos caught the buy. They, they catch the matches according to their seed. So Devin with uh, Cardani, seven and ten right out of the gate. Uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, 33. Nothing um, again. I mean, no, well, 33. We had, 30, yeah, 33 had some news to it. Yeah, uh, Rutgers, so, we, had, we, we were told before it was out on Twitter. Uh, Rutgers pulled the number three seed, uh, Sammy Alvarez, um, for reasons undisclosed. Um, not and COVID it is related. Not, it's, we know it's not COVID because they put in a substitute wrestler. Okay. Um, they entered uh, what Shane Metzler is that was that correct? Tony, that's his name? Yep, Shane Metzler. And so uh, Metzler takes the 14 seed. He drops all the way to the bottom. Um, and that bumped everybody up, including our own uh, Jay Crundell. So he went from the nine seed to the eight seed. That's correct. And uh, Berwick from Wisconsin went from the 10 to the nine. So now you're going to see uh, Rundell and Berwick uh, first round. Uh, that's a match that we didn't get early in the year, you know, when we were still getting our lineup sorted out and, and just kind of the, the beginning of the season. 
Jake was not yet in the, in the lineup. So we didn't get that match, even though we wrestled Wisconsin, they didn't see each other. Yeah. Um, but should, should be a great match. You know, a couple guys who, uh, who like to wrestle hard and get after it. it that's interesting that, uh, that in the bump there, Burwart comes up from the seven ten matchup and, and Rundell gets a, a completely new, you know, it's not like he just, just gets a different, just gets the same opponent with a different seed. Like it completely changes the outlook. In no doubt. And, and, you know, Tanner mentioned it kind of the bigger news there too is the fact that Alvarez, you know, it's not like he's going to be in the pool as an at large, right? I mean, that is, uh, he is out and will have no chance to wrestle at the national championship. So that's, you know, that's a big blow to Rutgers in terms of, of point scoring, right? I mean, that's a guy who was, I, I believe top five in the country, you know, at, at 133. So, so that's, that's a tough deal for them. And as you said, completely reshapes that bracket. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what uh, eight qualifiers coming out of that. And so, uh, you know, every man off camera before we start, you know, there's a lot of big first round matches, right? I mean, and obviously it's big 10 wrestling, so it's deep. And so, yes, you assume there's going to be a lot of good first round matches, but just in terms of getting yourself to the national championships, there's a, there's a lot of big first ones in there for guys mm -hmm. where, you know, you get that first one, you get a W uh, your path is, is pretty clear. Uh, on, changes on everything yeah NCAAs. And, and I always stress to the guys I mean obviously you always want to do as well as you can you know without exception yes every time you put your foot on the line you want to perform well but the thing that we, we look at this as is it's a qualifier so your first job is to get to nationals right like you know our, our biggest goals always occur at the NCAA tournament and so you want to look at this as a qualifier first and then, hey, then you want to be greedy too, right? Like mm -hmm. get yourself to nationals and then you get up as high on that podium as you can. First, third, whatever it is. And so um, you got to keep those priorities in mind, you know, uh, and what this weekend is about. Another relevant piece of news at 133, um, with, Sam, with Sammy Alvarez withdrawing um, in previous years with the new qualifier system, um, the Big Ten would have lost a spot at that weight, a qualifying spot for Nationals right. at that weight. With this year's format and COVID, we retain the spot. Hmm. So um, that's, you know, that's one more guy who's going to be able to go out there and, and earn an automatic spot to the National Championships. So, um, you know, we, 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 liked, we liked Jake's situation before, and we like it a lot more now. And so yeah. it's, um, it, should be, it should be fun to watch him as a true freshman go out there in his first Big Ten Championships and, and, and let it fly. Yep. Well, and I think that's the biggest thing, as you said, you got to let it fly. You know, you got to come out swinging in the first round. You can't look at it as, you know, working into the tournament, right? You work into the tournament, you might find yourself sitting, sitting on the sidelines, watching other guys wrestle. So that's the whole thing is to have each guy primed and ready to go in round one. You know what I mean? Make the most of the opportunity that you have now. If you try to work into it or look ahead, you know, you're, you're setting yourself up for, uh, you know, a, a broken heart. For sure. For sure. Uh, let's move to 141, Tony. we got Parker Phileas. Yeah. Uh, so, Parker, uh, another, hey, there's another good, good matchup. You got an 8 9 uh, matchup right away. Parker Phileas wrestling uh, Drew Matten out of uh, Michigan. Now, this is a, a match. They've not seen each other this year, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, but they did wrestle at the Michigan State Open, our first event last year. Um, with Parker coming out on top. So there's there's some good feelings there and some familiarity. But but uh, again, you know, two quality guys who are going to bang heads and it's one of those first round matchups you got to be ready for. Second straight year, uh, Parker draws his opening match against a Matten. He yeah. had uh, Drew's younger brother. I mean, is it Cole? Is that correct? Cole, yeah. Uh, yes, it was Cole. And that, you're exactly right. That's who we had first round last year. Parker obviously performed very well in that matchup. I believe had a major decision and he went did. on to he have did a have solid major? tournament. Yeah. So like you said, you know, uh, uh, another good first round matchup, but one that I think, you know, um, Parker should feel good about. Absolutely. Uh, 149 pounds, our top seeded wrestler of the, uh, of the championships, uh, senior Griffin Perriott gets uh, the three seed and he will have number 14 seed, Michael North of Maryland. Yeah, somebody we've not seen, not just, you know, Maryland, right, but but the North uh, boy himself, he's, he's new to us, um, and I honestly, I've not seen any tape on him yet, that's something we will be doing, you know, uh, the assistants and myself are going to be going through this, just to look for tendencies, you mm -hmm. know, 
lead leg, favorite attack, something he may do from top, you know, just, just a, a general thing. But, um, but yeah, we'll have to watch him a little bit and just get a little more familiar with him. So we know, you know, where we want to wrestle from and, and general things like that, but certainly Griffin, a, a heavy favorite um, in that match. I know you've said that before. I want to jump in here. Uh, that's really interesting it, to figure out the right way to approach coaching at this point. Cause like you say, you, you know, you can watch all, you can find all the film you can find on, on North um, and you can watch it, but there's still just so much, you know, 12 hours out the, you know, 15 hours out, whatever it is that, that you can, that you can process and, and implement, you know, and, and yep. you don't want to get bogged down too much on one opponent. So it's, it's finding a couple tendencies and then passing those along. And, and then, like you said, just a minute ago, okay, we've done all we can do. Just go out there and let it fly. Uh, I mean, that, that sort of speaks on so many different levels. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, you have to balance it out. Right. And then some of this comes from knowing your guys too. Like yeah. I, I still very much treat this on an individual basis because I have some older guys who have watched film and, and can digest it a little more easily. And you know, it's not going to pull them a lot of their game plan. And, and you've got some guys who, who don't want to know much them down or takes them away. And, and truly this time of year, you just need to wrestle to your strengths, wrestle to your positions, you know what I mean? And, and not, let you know your thoughts about your opponent slow you down too much right if you're thinking you're you're slow you just got to react yeah. and you got to wrestle and, and wrestle through each situation so yeah it's truly a balancing that out i do think a general knowledge right of your opponent you know what his lead leg is maybe what is a favorite attack is does he ride legs or not right so if you're standing up can the leg maybe come come in you know just there's general things that we like our guys to have a knowledge of and we'll coach them up you know we're we're going over here at 4 30 uh, to work out in the Bryce Jordan Center and, and get a good blow in and get our weight down. But, you know, we may cover a few things based on this, these first round matchups. Mm -hmm. But again, nothing extensive because you want the kids focused on on their things, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll keep moving here. 157, Kendall Coleman, the number four seed. Um, you know, defending Big Ten runner up at the weight. Um, but, you know, some some new faces in there. Uh, Kendall will, uh, so Rutgers, it does not have an entry at 57. So there's only 13, there's only 13 bodies nice. at that weight. Um, yep. again, we don't have anything so solid, but you would be led to believe that they are holding their, their guys being held out due to COVID. So he still has a shot to chance to, to qualify for nationals. Yep. Um, yep. so, you know, Kennard, we, we, I believe is his name. Yeah. Uh, Robert Kennard. Um, you know, we wish, obviously wish him the best, but mm -hmm. as a result, um, 13 guys at the weight. Kendall will draw a, uh, a late switch at the weight. He'll get Luke Bauman of Indiana, who, uh, you know, is, is a 149 pounder that's coming up. Yeah, um, he wrestled. We saw him wrestle the extra match uh, portion of our duel with Indiana, right? So at the very last date of, of our Big Ten schedule, we did see him. So I, I, I got to watch him compete a little bit. So there's some familiarity there, but, um, but 149 pounder who is moving up uh, again, you know, that's something where, you know, uh, Kendall being a big 10 finalist is, is going to be heavily favored. Um, and, you know, and that's something where I bring this up, you never look past anyone, but you know, this leads to the tournament scoring mentality as well. You know, you yeah. talk to people like, Hey, if you can pin a guy and get us two extra uh, uh, team points or tech fall a guy and get that point and a half, you know, that's something you definitely want to do. Right. I mean, you know, there are, there are uh, big 10 championships decided within a, a point or two at the end of the tournament in a two days. So, you know, uh, that kind of brings up the point of, you know, when you have a chance to put a guy away or get the tech fall or get the major, you definitely want to do that. And, and those are the situations we'll also be talking to our guys about. It, it's not that you look past, right. It's you're going to wrestle, you know, um, wrestle hard. And then we see where are you at within the match as the match is going on. If you're up uh, 12 in the third, Hey, we're going to look for the tech fall. You know, or if you certainly put a guy in his back, you, hey, close it, right? End it right there. So, so just don't let him off. Yeah, it, it brings up a uh, tournament mentality. You know, well, I guess duels are similar, right? Bonus points are big. So that's something where we're, we're going to really make sure our guys understand, you know, um, you know, winning those situations. The other thing you got with the tournament mentality is, you know, just the idea that you're talking about two, three, maybe four matches in a day. So if you can, not go the full seven every time, then that's a little bit of gas you leave in your tank. 
Yeah, um, no doubt. You need. Um, I will tell you this. I mean, this is something we talk about a lot. We believe in our shape, right? Like we believe yeah. in our, our toughness and our grit. We always feel like, you know, that that's a, a big uh, strength for us. And as you go deeper and deeper into these events, th that really starts to pay off. Like mm -hmm. the ability to perform several times across two days in very tough matches, you know, shape and mentality is going to mean something. And again, that's just making sure you set that tone and that you're making sure your, your opponent's paying a price. It will pay off big. And I, and I certainly hope, um, you know, that our guys are believing in that um, as we, we go into these big two days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our other change, you know, Rundell was the one change at 133. Our other change is another freshman. Uh, Garrett Ninehouse uh, previously was was in the pre-seeds was the 10 seed. Um, that was a clerical error on the Big Ten's part. He um, he and he, he is actually the number nine seed, and uh, he will bump up. And instead of uh, instead of facing the seven seed, he'll have the eight seed Jake Tucker of Michigan State in the uh, in the opening round. Yep, in a match, that was an opponent we did face. We were a little short in that match, but I think there was a lot of signs. It was a very tight match, right? It was a very tight, tough match. And, you know, when you go back and you look at the film, he was on the leg three, four times with great scoring opportunities. Uh, he made a little bit of a mistake when he was riding, letting the hips get away from him there early on. And, and you know, Garrett's very tough on top. So, again, it's a, still another match that there's a lot of positive feelings because as you watch the film, you can see there's a lot of different ways we could have flipped that match our way. It wasn't one that really got away from us, you know what I mean, or we got dominated in. So, you know, I think Garrett certainly should feel good about that matchup. And, you know, you know he's, he's better than he was, you know, three weeks ago when we last, last wrestled that match. So excited to watch that as, as another good first-round match. Yeah, I was going to say, he's got to be anxious to get, get his hands on Jake Tucker again just to, just to see how, you know, what he's learned and what the last three weeks have meant to him. That was yeah. kind of the question I was going to ask Tony is like, is there uh you know, how do you feel as a head coach about kind of like the vengeance mentality of like, you know, trying to flip a result, you know, you're, you're up, you're, you're, you're upset that you lost to a guy the first time and you're ready to go beat him the second time. Yeah. I mean, however you want to frame it, right. They say vengeance mentality or, Hey, it's just, it's just being excited to wrestle a guy or to see a guy or being up for the match. And, and I just truly believe in that as, as a group, right? Like our, we, we have gotten in a very strange year uh, to the end of the year. Right. And we have motivated and hungry guys and they know that there's a lot of stuff that can be decided and settled this weekend. So, so I do expect to see their best. I know they're prepared and they're ready. And, and I do think, Hey, they are excited for the challenge that's coming. And so, you know, if a little added extra piece for Garrett is the fact that he was a little short against this guy last time, Hey, that's just more fuel for the fire. Throw, yeah. throw another log on uh, in terms of your motivation and your intensity and every other reason you had for being here and performing at a high level. For sure. Um, 174, Emil Sundlin is the 12 seed. He, again, he'll get another familiar opponent, somebody he faced recently in fifth seeded Donnell Washington of Indiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, it was the, the final score was 5 1. Um, it was a little closer than that. And the fact that, you know, Emil sold out at the end and tried to, you know, tried to get a takedown and tie it up and, and gave up, gave one up late. So the 5 1 final was, it was, it was, it came down right to the wire. Yeah, it was 3-1, as, as you mentioned, until very, you know, with just a few seconds left when he took a shot trying to make something happen and gave up the two. So, you know, that's a, that's a one take down match. And, um, you know, I know Emil, you know, he's excited about it. You know I mean? He's excited about it. He, he understands, too, that he didn't quite push the pace enough in certain spots of that match, you know. He had a stall call on him and we're going into the third period and we just, we needed to get after him a little bit more, pick up that tempo, get a few more scoring holds going on, right? Attacks. So I think again, he is in a, in a good place uh, as far as understanding what he needs to do to flip that result and feeling good about it. Uh, 184. Uh, we alluded to this a little bit last week. Um, voting the voting the seeds on the 184 weight class was insane. <laughs> and um just just take them all to it, st louis the whole field. And you know what it was funny like the, the the when you look at the voting you know we can't we can't get into too much about the voting but um it was all over the place okay. i mean every coach voted that weight class very differently 
Um, you know, you'd have a guy that would be like a three seed from one coach and an eight seed from another coach. Like it was just all over the map. Um, but it, the, the funny thing kind of resulting out of that is that, uh, there were no changes at the weight and there were no, uh, you know, none of the, none of the, um, none of the point spreads were close enough to really open that weight up and like, you know, move guys around. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, I thought that was kind of fascinating to see how like, you know, everybody had it different, but we have no opportunity to argue that weight. Yeah. You know, and it, this, it brought up an interesting point. Um, you know, we've talked about this. You got to be within the three points, right. To raise an issue. And in a shortened season like this, especially where you have some mixed results, um, you did have some things that were oh, a huge range, right? As, as Tanner said, like a three to an eight. And I'll tell you what, if, if that guy had a three, you know, that didn't keep you, that three seed kept you from maybe being within three points, right? The other people could have had him at seven, you know, and he, he looks like, a, you know, seven, but that three, put him up to six and then he didn't even have, you didn't even have enough um, point spread to, to raise an argument. So, you know, I, I feel like, you know, that's something we may want to talk about in April at the coaches meeting is should we widen that or open that up? Yeah. You know, in, in most years, right. You have a, a bigger sample size. So if you have upsets, you have um, common opponents or more time to overcome that, right. That upset. And this year in a shortened season and only big 10 competition, you didn't have that sample size to compare or you didn't have enough matches to make up for your upset, right? A poor performance or, you know, if you got pinned or something. So I thought that's why you saw um, the disparity in the voting. And at the same time, they weren't close enough on the point spread to vote or raise an argument. So that might be something we want to look at, you know, in the spring and April as, as a coaches group, we'll just have to see. Yeah. And you know, the reality is, you know, you say, and what you're saying is true, Tony, like the shortened season kind of led to the whole idea that it was a little, you know, that they were a little tighter, but, um, 184 was a mess last year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I remember the, the big thing on my whiteboard in my office that we drew up to show that like this guy beat this guy, but then he lost to this guy, but then he beat this guy. And it was just like, in the yep. end, you might as well have just thrown darts. Like it was just yeah. like, you know, it was crazy to look at you know, so two straight years, it's just been a hodgepodge of like, you know, some of it's matchup based, like some of it's like, you know, you, like you said, a uh, guy has a bad day, like whatever it is. Um, that has been a, uh, that's been a wild wait the last two years. And I'm, I'm anxious to see how it plays out over the next couple of days uh, yep. in that tournament format. No doubt. Uh, and with all that being said, uh, Max, Max Lyon wound up at the seven. And so he gets yep. the, the 10, which is Ohio state. Uh, right. So, I mean, um, that's a guy, I think we had him, did we have him first round last year as well? Yeah. So th another common yep. opponent, right. And then another, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough match. Um, but certainly uh, I've mentioned this to Tanner on the way over. So Max Lyon, Rocky Jordan out of the gate, but, uh, Max always seems to be, uh, you know, doing his best wrestling at the end of the year mm -hmm. at the Big Ten Championships. He'll turn matches around where he's been a little short. You know, last year he had uh, Janzer, you know, in the tournament. He'd lost in the duel, and sure enough, he turned that that match around. So, mm -hmm. you know, even though he's been short against Rocky Jordan in the past, uh, I know obviously Max is highly motivated, but um, it's something where I'm looking to watch him turn this, this match around and, and get the opportunity early in the tournament to do it. He actually lost to Jordan twice last year at Big Tens. So yes, first, yes, first, first match and last match. Yep, absolutely. Right. So um, moving up to 197, Thomas Panola, uh, the six seed at 197 pounds. Um, he will wrestle the 11 seed uh, Garrett Joles of Minnesota. Uh, they did meet during this year. Tom posted a uh, Tom posted a major decision over Joles at the uh, mm -hmm. Rutgers Tri Duel out in Piscataway. Um, and, uh, Tom has looked good. I mean, he's got two close mm -hmm. losses. Tom's looked good all season. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, obviously a close loss to Warner where he gave up, you know, six points early and came roaring back through the match. And then obviously he was up on Caffey five, three in the third when again, he got thrown to his back, trying to hang on to a position, probably a little too long, but but nevertheless, Tom has been been very tough all year, right? First match, 
when he when he started the season to now, he's been very consistent in his performance and, and how he's competed. So uh, I, I got I have no doubt that he's showing up or ready to wrestle hard uh, tomorrow. And Tom's one of those guys you alluded to before. Tom's not a big film guy. Tom's not a big. Uh, he's like you know, just give me one or two things to look at and and just just you know wind me up and let me go. Yep, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, he's, he's going to go out and do what he does, like I said, and that's a good thing, you know, because what he does is, is pretty tough. Absolutely. Um, rounding it out at heavyweight, uh, freshman Dorian Keyes getting his first shot. You know, we got three true freshmen in the lineup for Big Tens yep. with uh, Rundell, Ninehouse, and, and, and Mr. Keyes. Um, you know, he's a, he's a guy who's, who was in the lineup a little bit this year, got a win for us against Northwestern, went out and had a tough go against Tony Cassiope of, uh, of Iowa, um, has wrestled a lot of the extra matches. And, uh, and here, he, here he goes right into the fire at, at, at heavyweight in the Big Ten. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, uh, Dorian's a very talented kid, you know, um, wasn't necessarily expected to be here, right, the way a lot of our duels were going, but ne nevertheless, here he is. And it's kind of like we started the year. If you go back when we started against Northwestern, we had four true freshmen in the lineup, which was a first for me, you know, at that time. And then I think here's another first. I can't ever remember uh, coaching on a team that had three true freshmen, you know, at, at the, uh, the conference championships. But all of them have great opportunities to do well. And, and Dorian's, you know, no different. Very talented kid, you know, good athlete. You know, he's, he's been somebody who – you know, like a lot of guys started slow because of COVID and stuff. And we've seen him kind of really start to kind of, kind of open up and grow and, and, and mature, you know, in a, in a lot of ways. So I am, I'm excited to see him against some very quality people and, and how he responds at, at the end of the day, you know, there's no pressure on him, right? He's, you know, he's, he's the underdog in some of these. So, Hey, go out and get after people and let the fur fly you know, see if you got a guy who's trying to work into the tournament or who's a little tight, or maybe he's not ready to wrestle hard. You know what I mean? And so you want Dorian to go out and you want him to be the tough out, you know what I mean? Um, tomorrow, you know what I mean? Be the guy getting after people. Absolutely. Um, Corey, any other questions or thoughts about the bracket as you, as you've kind of looked at it or, and, and, and kind of seen where we're at over the next two days? Um, it, it's kind of a the only thought I have is kind of a philosophical one, Coach. And you've alluded uh, you've alluded to it a couple times already. Um, going in and and you know, game planning, gaming out the weekend. Uh, how much of it comes into play? I know you said it. You know, first and foremost, this is a qualifying event for the biggest goal of the season. How much do you figure? You know, as you go through. You, when the cameras are off and, and you're by yourself, okay, here's how many bids this weight has. Here's where we need to get to, to get that, you know, and, and, and working all that out. How much of that comes into play, taking out the, the, the uh, at-large bid aspect of this, like, okay, here's what this guy needs to do. He can drop potentially here as long as he ends up on this part of the backside, you know, how, how, how does that process work for you? Well, I think in this year, uh, you bring it up, it's, it's a different process. The last few years, right, it was all uh, data-driven in terms of your win percentage, your RPI rank, your coach's rank, when you had lots of data mm -hmm. to, to use those, those numbers. Now, here we are this year, and it's just all allotted spots. So, you know, while, you know, as coaches, I'm sure we sit around and we look at how many weights each, uh, you know, how many wild cards are allotted each weight already, uh, I'm just telling you, in a shortened year with less data, you know, to comparatively, uh, you don't want to leave it in those people's hands. You right. know, you, you just don't. And, and that's obviously never the case. But because in past years, I got a 35 match sample, I could have a much stronger feeling about where he's at relative to the rest of the country. And this year, you just don't have it. I mean, um, you know, some of us have wrestled nine matches. Some of us have wrestled four. You know, some guys are in this field from other schools in the Big Ten that ha have no matches. So it's just hard to know where you stack up. And, and honestly, what you want to keep the guys uh, on top of is they don't worry about any of that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, that's just something as coaches we do, because obviously we're fighting to get as many guys to nationals as we can. And we want to be educated about where we may stand and what we can expect. Right. It's just it, it almost for me is about managing expectations where if I'm looking at it, 
you know, after the tournament shakes out, I'm thinking, okay, are we going to have eight? We're going to have nine. We're going to have seven. You know, what's that number going to be um, in terms of, okay, now it's, it's the next goal of how, how well can we score at the tournament you know, at, at NCAA? So, um, you know, this year more than ever, because of the small sample size and the historical data, how they awarded spots, man, I think, hey, just keep, keep your eye on that guy in front of you and, and don't worry about the rest of it because it's not in your control. For sure. For sure. Well, uh, action starts 10 a.m. tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern with uh, coverage on the Big Ten Network and the Big Ten Network streaming channels. Coverage on Purdue Sports uh, or Purdue Wrestling social channels as well. Uh, Tanner, final thoughts before we wrap this sucker up? No, uh, you know, honestly, I, the, the only thing I'll say, this is, you know, one of my favorite weekends of the year. I really enjoy this tournament. Um, I enjoy the people that are involved with it and around it. Um, you know, get to see my good friend Pat Don guy out here at Penn State. Uh, you know, got to see AJ Eads from the Big Ten, who's a friend of the podcast, mm-hmm. has been on with us before. You know, there's uh, it's just pretty awesome to watch these kids go out there and lay it on the line in, in what is arguably the toughest event, you know, in the country every year. Yeah. Um, and so I'm 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 pumped for the next two days and and to get, go watch our guys do their thing. Yep. It'll be interesting too, to see the tournament set up. You know, we got in yesterday and we worked out at the, uh, the Penn state wrestling room, right? That was our first workout. Now we're going over here at four 30 and we'll, it'll be our first chance to kind of see the tournament floor, which will be good for the guys, right? Get yeah. some familiarity because there will be some different things due to COVID protocols, you know, at the spacing of the mats, you know, where the teams are going to be kind of housed in terms of their base camp, you know, warm up area. So it will be interesting to see what changes or how that impacts what we're used to. Mm-hmm. But uh, nevertheless, to uh, to be here with a chance to reach our goals, you know, from where we were several months ago is, is a huge deal. And, yep. uh, and I'm just excited to watch these kids have a chance to reach, reach, you know, some milestones, you know, some things they've been working for their entire lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I wish I was there with y'all, but I'll be watching and uh, following along and, and can't wait to see it this weekend. Good luck uh, out on the mat. Good luck with everything. And uh, all the, always only the best for Purdue wrestling. We'll, uh, we'll leave it there. We'll, we'll be back with y'all next week to talk about the great results from Big Ten 2021 championships. Until then, I'm Corey. That's Tony. That's Tanner. So long, everybody. Boiler up.